Hey family, Pastor Tim here. You know, all my life as a kid, my mom used to say things like, persevere, persevere, Tim. Make it through the storm. Tim, you're going to be okay. Tim, keep your head up. Tim, I raised you to be stronger than that. Perseverance is a word that has been, become part of my DNA. And I realized as a child of God, I got to be able to persevere and go through some things. Well, you're going to be blessed today because Pastor Vic is going to be talking about perseverance and having a heart for it. So let's go into the sanctuary and hear his word. Praise the Lord, everybody. How's everybody doing this morning? It is so great to be here this morning, bringing forth the word of God. And uh, I am just thankful uh, in, this, in this very challenging time of our lives, how God has shown up. He has manifested himself. And I'll be talking about that a little bit today in the message uh, that God impressed upon my heart. Probably about two months ago, the Lord began, he, he whispered this word into my ear. And uh, so a lot of people in our church know that I, I, I battle with uh, insomnia. So it keeps me up uh, not only late at night, but literally into the early morning. There's, not, there's days where I'm still awake at 5, 6, and even 7 o'clock in the morning. And it throws my day off. And all these different things are so challenging. But I want you to know something that God speaks to us even in those times. And I began to take advantage of the time rather than complaining about not being able to sleep. And God began to speak. And in, in one of those moments, God whispered this specific word into my heart. Into my, he just dropped it in my spirit. And uh, for some reason, you know, you know, it just began to stick. And I began to ponder it. I began to think about it. I began to pray about it. Um, you know, I, 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 sometimes I think I even wanted to ignore it. I wanted to ignore the word because it just, it just kept coming up. And even in conversation with different people, this word would come up. And now this word has become a, comf a comfort and a, and a consolation to my life. I've been able to look back at the trials and the challenges, sickness, and even death that has faced us. I looked at my life and I looked back to some very difficult times, life-changing times, going through a divorce, going through cancer. I had valley fever, and some people think that valley fever is not a thing until you get it. I remember sharing with people when I was here in the, you know, we're living in the Bay, and, and you know, I live in Tracy now, and I told them I have valley fever, and they looked at me like, uh, what is that? They never heard of it because they don't live in the valley. They live in the Bay. But I, you know, I, I knew about it because I already lived in Bakersfield before. And then recently, here during this time of pandemic, I lost my father-in-law. My wife lost her, her, her dad. My sister died of cancer. She was diagnosed with, with pancreatic cancer, and, and within just a few months, she was gone. And very recently, we lost my mother-in-law, my wife's mother. All these things have happened in my life, and it's been so challenging. It's been so tough. The word that God impressed upon my heart, it, it, it's so plain, but, but people overlook it. There's people that are even practicing it, but they don't know what they're doing. And even as believers, it's easy to succumb, to, to, to give in to the influence of the world. Because the world wants instant gratification. They want everything now. They want an answer now. They want their food now. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 18, this is just kind of a layout, but, but 
what it talks about there that, that you know, the, the, the sufferings that we're going through are not worthy to compare with the glory that shall be revealed. But we have to do something. The Bible talks about Moses in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. It's the chapter of faith, of, of, of faith people. And in that chapter, it says this. It says that, that you know, rather than, than, than live out his life in Egypt, he chose to suffer with the people of God and endure the hardship rather than the pleasures of sin that were only for a little while. What's the word that God impressed upon my heart? It's not, it's not spoken in this verse I'm going to read. This is the opening verse. But the principle is there. Galatians 6, 9 reads like this. And let us not be weary in doing good. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. The word that God impressed upon my heart and the word I want to convey to you and let it stick in your mind, let it stick in your heart today is the word perseverance. Perseverance. Listen to me carefully today. See, a lot of people think of the word perseverance and they think it means don't give up. Don't quit. And here's a better one. They go, you know, hang in there. But this is a word that has spiritual Holy Ghost significance behind it. People from the Old Testament and people in the New Testament and people to this very day persevere and there's something great to take place in their lives because they do so. This, it's more than just that. Perseverance, listen to me carefully, perseverance is enduring, anticipating, with great expectation of hope. Hope causes you to persevere. The Bible says about faith that faith is a substance of things, uh, not seeing the evidence of things, you know, hope for the things of not seen. That's, that, that's, that's faith and it's connected to hope. But hope is connected to perseverance. You can't persevere if you don't have hope. We have, we have the great hope in Jesus Christ. That, that, that everything in this world, everything we're going through is going to stay behind. Hope is not genuine if we don't persevere. You can say you have hope, but as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't persevere, then persevere is not genuine because it's connected to hope. Yeah. Hope is, is anticipating something great down the road. But, but let me tell you something here. Perseverance connected to hope isn't about what you will see in this life. And we may see some great things. But it's not talking about that. Yeah. It's when this life is over that we will receive all the glory that God has for us. Hallelujah. Anything that we get on this side of heaven, this side of living life here on earth, that's the glory that's going to be revealed to us. But you got to persevere. You got to be willing to press forward. The, 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 the Bible, you know, talks about perseverance in so many different words. Be steadfast, endure, press on. All these words are, are behind it is the word perseverance. Perseverance. 
It's been said that today's Christians would not, could not have made it some hundred years ago. Even 50 years ago, I said. Why? Because within people today, the pull of the world says, I want it now. That instant gratification. You know, there's people that that get so caught up in the word happy. I just want to be happy. I want to be happy in my marriage. I want to be happy in my home. I want to be happy in my job. Listen to me. You're a believer in Christ Jesus. Happy is not good enough. Because happy simply says, I'm doing good. I'm happy. I feel good because everything is going good right now. I got a new car and the bills are paid and and the kids are behaving and me and my husband are getting along great. Me and my wife are getting along great. That's happy. But God wants to give you more than happiness. He wants you to live life with joy. And joy is something deep on the inside, a sense that comes only from God by his Holy Spirit that says everything is going to be all right no matter what's taking place right now. God is in control. God's got this. God is supporting me. God is upholding me. God is the one that helps me every single day. Today, people don't know what it is to pray through something, how to weather the storm. They don't know how to wait on the Lord. The answer doesn't come in in, in a time of convenience. It doesn't come immediately. I have a news flash for people out there today. God is not Google. You can't just type it in and say, God, here's what I want. Here's what I need. I need an answer. Let me Google God. You're Googling God. You think you are, but you're Googling Google. You're searching out there in the world and what it has to say and what what, what it wants to do. I mean, I have gotten a hold of some passages, you know, just Googling them, and they're jacked up. Man, some of the the commentary and the references they make, and you go, what is this about? And your spirit just lets you know this isn't right. But if you're just looking for quick answers, you're going to go, oh, I got an answer. Newsflash, God is not Google. God is greater than that. Allow me to just share a few things with you that God impressed upon my heart these past few couple of months. You see, this sermon has been in the making all my life (laughs) because of trials, because of testing, because of sickness. All these different things are, are, are in this message even though I can't talk about all of it today. I want to share these very simple principles with you, first of all. To persevere at times, you must pursue. To persevere at times, you must pursue. In the Word of God, you read of men and women who inquired of the Lord before they would even pursue the enemy in battle. They would begin to pray and say, Lord, should we go after them? And sometimes God would say, pursue. And other times he would say, no. Now what happens if you, do, if you decide to pursue when God says no? You're going to be in a lot of trouble. You're going to waste time. You're going to waste energy. You're going to waste money. You're going to waste your time. All because you're pursuing something when God did not give you the green light. I've put it like this in the past. You can't do something and then want God to co-sign it. 
You been there? You can't ask God to do something after you've done it and then want him to come and co-sign it for you. You have to pursue. In the Old Testament, before they delivered a word, a, a prophetic word to God's people, they inquired of the Lord. Some of them even questioned the Lord. Jeremiah and Ezekiel are a couple of examples of men that questioned the Lord when God was saying, I want you to give this message. But as they inquired, he says, give the message. It's a hard message. It's a tough message. But they need to hear it. Ezekiel found himself in a predicament. He was preaching the word, preaching the word, preaching the word. And he said, oh, God, he goes, you know, they, they've turned down the, the idols and they've, they've, you know, they brought down the Asherah poles. And they're not, you know, worshiping God, you know, other gods in the mountains. And he said, why do you still have me preaching this same message? Preachers, preachers know what I'm talking about out there right now. Why am I preaching the same message? He was saying, they, they, they've, ter- they've torn down the, the, the idols. They, they've, all, they've done all these things. It looks good. What's wrong? And God says, they, they've torn down the idols. They've gotten rid of the Asherah poles. He says, but they're still in their heart. The idols are still in their heart. And God is about the heart. God knows what we don't know. He knows the heart of man. You're out there today. God knows your heart. Be careful when you want to get all spiritual with people. Say, God knows my heart. You need, to, you need to be shaking in your boots because God knows your heart. God knows exactly what's taking place in your life. Imagine right now if Pastor Victor got, you know, just put out. And all of a sudden there was a Zoom that God put on. And he put what's in your heart, in my heart. For all your Zoom buddies to see. Because God knows the heart. He knows the intention. He knows the motives. Sometimes we do things and and, and we're looking good. We're smelling good. We're talking good. And all the time God says, I know why you're doing that. You're doing it for recognition. You're doing it because you want to gain a greater position but you're not doing it from your heart. People that, you know, are grumbling behind the scenes. To persevere at times, you must pursue. Secondly, at times, to persevere, you must know how to encourage yourself. You ever been there? Nobody's there to encourage you. There's no pat on the back. Nobody's saying you're doing a good job. And, and we all need to hear those things. You know, as, 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 you know, in the past, being a boss, being a manager, being a leader in church, people need to be encouraged with, hey, you know what? You're doing great. And it feels, it feels awesome to somebody when they hear it. But there's those times when Nobody, you, you think nobody sees and nobody cares. Elijah felt that way. Huh? He said, I'm the only one left, Lord. And what did he say? He goes, Lord, it's enough. I just want to die. And, and God said, hey, hey, you, you know, you need to calm down. He goes, I got some folks that still have not bowed their knee to Babylon and their gods. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, the Bible, and I I paraphrase a chapter and then just going to throw the verse out at you a little bit. David and his men go to battle. And when they go to battle, they leave behind their, their wives and their family and their servants 
their cattle, their, the, the camels, the goats, and the sheep. This, this is their riches. This is their, their livelihood as they're out in battle. And while they're on the battlefield, the enemy sneaks in behind them and, and takes everything. Wives and children, the servants, everything is taken. And they get back to the camp. And the Bible says the, man, the men were so angry in verse 6 that they began to talk amongst themselves. And it says they wanted to stone David. They wanted to get some big old rocks and began to throw them at him. They wanted to kill him. How would you feel as a leader? Pastor Tim, if all of a sudden people are standing off in the corner somewhere going, oh man, uh, did you bring your rock to church today? What? Yeah. He's going to get it today. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill David. And the Bible says that all he could do, it says, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. He couldn't find encouragement anywhere else. He found his encouragement in the Lord and God gave him a, a strategy for battle and they went and they brought back everything that the enemy tried to steal. That's where we get the song from. I went to the enemy's camp. Huh? Took back what he stole from me. That's where the song comes from. Because, you know, from David and his men that went and, re and brought back everything that the enemy tried to steal. The principle there isn't, oh, you know what, we, you know, we need to take back everything that the enemy stole from us. No, the principle is you need to encourage yourself in the Lord. That's the principle. See, there it is again. We want instant gratification. I, you know, I went to the enemy's camp and took back what he stole from me, took back what he stole from me. That's what we want to do. That's not what the principle is. The principle is, you know what? When times are hard, when times are tough, when nobody wants to talk to you, when everybody's avoiding you, and you know what? You need to encourage yourself in the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the principle that's being taught there. The third thing I want to share with you is this. Let, let, me, let, me, let me begin with this statement first. It, 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 is, it, is, it, is the, it has become the DNA of our church. And we've made a proclamation many years back that this is a place of healing and restoration. We want to see people healed and restored. And we've seen it. It's not just that we want to, but we've seen God restore broken lives. I've, I, we've seen people that, that, that have fallen as leaders come to our church and God restores them. Here's my, here's my third point. One must, pers one must persevere and do the right thing to heal properly. You got to pers persevere. And you have to do the right things to be healed. And listen to what I said, to be healed properly. Listen to what I'm going to say here. All the advice, all the counsel, the help books, they're of no help. If we don't apply it, if we don't practice it. See, I can have a broken hand and do what the doctor says to, for it to heal properly. But I got to go to, I got to go to therapy and I got to, you know, begin to manipulate my hand to get the strength and the movement back in it. Or I can leave it alone, I can neglect it, 
And the hand will heal, but not properly. I may lose movement. It may shrivel up. I won't be able to pick up a pencil. I won't be able to you know, hold a grocery bag. Why? Because I didn't do what the doctor says. I didn't apply what he said properly. Here in the word of God is everything that you and I need to heal properly, to be overcomers, to make it in this life. And I want to encourage you today to persevere. More than just hang in there, persevere. More than, you know, you know what, just, you know, just trust God. No, persevere. Hallelujah. I'm not going to quit. That, that's great to say, but persevere no matter what. The true Christian, the true Christian life is not easy. We must pick up our cross daily. There will be difficult and trying times. We are not exempt from challenges and suffering in this life. And I close with this. We must receive hope of eternal glory, not temporary happiness. How do you do it? The old song, Mighty Clouds of Joy used to sing, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. Remember that. Put your eyes on eternal things, not the things of this world that just don't last. I love you all. I pray that you've been encouraged today. May the Lord richly bless you wherever you're at. God bless you. Amen. Father, I just want to thank you for this word that we received today. You told us that we were going to be troubled on every side. We were going to go through things, but you're right there with us, God, to help us through the storms of life, to help us persevere. You will never leave us nor forsake us. So let this word that was preached sit on each and every listener so that we are encouraged to know that we can make it through anything because you're there with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, make sure you tune in next week. And while you're going through the week, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might.